The Lord, brothers and sisters, you are welcome to this Thanksgiving testimony and prayer meeting to appreciate God for all the Lord has done for us, for bringing us through January, February, March into this month of April, for successfully taking us through the first quarter of the year 2022 and has brought us into the second quarter. Glory honor, praise, majesty, power be unto our God in the name of Jesus. Of course, our theme for this year is our year of abundant life, our year of abundant life in Christ Jesus, because it's only in Christ Jesus that one can enjoy abundant life. So we want to go straight into the testimonies thanksgiving, our appreciation to God. The Lord has been good to us. We spend the whole of uh, January, February, March teaching on the theme for the year, Abundant Life in Christ Jesus. And by the grace of God, the Spirit of God uh, taught us quite a lot. And that culminated in a six-day fasting and prayer under the theme, a time of refreshing, time of refreshing. And we have really been refreshed where we really um, receive on, on all the manifestation of the spirit and the power of God in our lives. And so with all this and all the other things the Lord has been doing daily in our lives, we have come to just say, thank you, Lord. So it is time for us to share our testimonies and express our gratitude and thanks to God. After that, we will share the theme for the month of April and a few exhortations before we continue to pray. So please, the line is now opened. Feel free to open the line and share your testimonies, your testimonies. Who wants to go first? The Lord has been good to us. The Lord has been good to me. The Lord has been good to you. That we are alive to see today is good. And the Lord has been manifesting his signs and wonders that's showing himself to us in various ways. You know, when God does something for us and he will continue to do, it is to keep letting us know, showing to us um, that he loves us, that he is with us, and to encourage us to continue to stay firm and stay strong in our faith in him. So your testimony will encourage somebody else. It will strengthen somebody else's faith and will also seal your own uh, um, miracles and your prayers. So please go ahead and share your testimony. Feel free to open your line. Let me start because I actually planned that I will start today. So, so for me, I want to thank God. The Lord has been uh, uh, amazing. He has been marvelous. I did testify on uh, Friday, right? It was on Friday. We also had specific uh, time of testimony for um, the time of refreshing program. And I talked about sudden pain that I had. Um, in my throat region, and I just committed it to God. I did tell us, I mean, as I would always be honest about it, that it reduced, the pain reduced. It, it was sharp, and yet the pain reduced. After that testimony that I shared, the pain went completely, and I really give God praise. The other thing, it's uh, just again, like I shared, that sometimes the way I experience God, I also share with others when I say, and of course, it's all in the Bible, that Jesus Christ did many signs and uh, miracles and proof that he is the son of God. God did many things through him and proved that he is the son of God. 
um, the same way he's doing in our lives to prove that we are with his children and that he is with us. For some time, I was having trouble sleeping. Uh, one occasion, doctor, both uh, the one here with us and uh, um, the hospital that I went to, they've recommended some things that at times I've taken and it didn't help. But somehow, as we just kept going on praying and, uh, you know, just ministering to ourselves, I found that I could sleep both in the day, take siesta, and then in the night, I would still sleep. Before I dare not try sleeping in the daytime, I probably would have only two hours sleep in the night. But for some time now, I can sleep an hour more in the day and in the night, I will still sleep and sleep well. To God be the glory for his healing. That's, uh, okay, I should add the third one. Oh, the third one is, uh, oh, I have been mightily blessed. The way the Lord has led us, I learned so much in the first quarter by the things that God taught us during the Abundant Life Teaching Series. To God be all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so who wants to go next? Yes, Brother Sonny, please go ahead. Yes, thank you very much, Pastor. I, I want to thank God for what he has done in my life. Thank God for his uh, protection. It's not easy. We all are aware of what is going on in the world, but God is keeping me as a person. So I have to show that uh, gratitude for what he has done. This is the month of April. I know very well that uh, so many people who actually started this year with me as a person, many of them are uh, no more alive. I think uh, many of them actually celebrated on the 31st night of uh, December. Two of them are not as even better than them, but God, by his mercy, uh, has been faithful in keeping me alive up to today. And this is the month of April, the second day of the month of April. So God has been faithful. So I have to thank him for what he has done. I have to thank him for my life. And uh, I've been talking about the issue of me being sick, no, sometimes being very tired and weak. But for a very long time now, since I've joined this uh, uh, platform, uh, most of those things are no more there. The weaknesses in the bones, in the body, sometimes you find it difficult to walk. It, uh, it was a serious challenge to me. But through this platform and the word of God that I've been hearing and the prayers, I think I can now walk freely, run around without much of those things. So these are the things that I can actually thank God for, most especially for the gift of life and the blessings that he has given me as a person. So I must be grateful to him. So that is my testimony. Thank you. Yes, thank you for that indeed. Uh, you see, when God heals, he sustains the healing. I, I think that's another word for that testimony. Testimony for life and God's healing and sustaining the healing, not heal, heal you today, tomorrow it's back. Thank you for that testimony. Next person, Brother Dara, go ahead, please. I want to thank God for two things that have happened in the last uh, week. Number one, I want to, my testimony, the first testimony is uh, testimony for, um, of provision. Uh, I did quite a number of things that stretched me financially. Um, in, the, in that last month and got to a point where I literally was trusting God for each day, uh, providing each day. And he saw me through, he saw me through and I'm very, very grateful to him. And within the week of prayers, there were things that I, I needed clarity for. And I had confusion over a few things. And I think um, two days ago, I was able to you know, get clear directions on the next steps to take. And I just wanted to say return thanks to him for being the steward over my life so far. And I appreciate praise God. Thank you. Thank you. God's provision. Oh, you remember the I am. Oh, glory be to God. That reminds me of 
John's captioning of Jesus, the I am. I am the bread of life. Remember, I am the bread of life. And also one of the seven miracles, like I told us, seven is just a number to make it, uh, you know, sound uh, unique. Jesus did a lot more, quite a lot more. Yeah, one of the seven miracles, notable miracles. Yes, I think that's the word. Um, when Jesus told his disciples, he said, cast onto the right side, cast your net onto the right side, and they caught so many fishes. Uh, so he is able to supply all our needs. So uh, testimony of provision and of direction. Our God gives us the direction and guidance. Thank you, Brother Dara, for that. We want to pray for these testimonies, and we want to jointly thank God for his goodness, for his mercies, for his blessings. And at the end of our cop corporately thanking God, I will round off this session. So let us pray, everyone. I believe every one of us has a reason to thank God. And so join me again and let us just give him thanks. Tell him, Heavenly Father, with thank you. I thank you for my life. Go ahead, you yourself, give God thanks. This time, I'm not just going to be guiding you. You just give God thanks. Open your mouth with me. I wish we could open the lines and all of us just keep thanking God. Keep thanking God. Remember when Jesus entered into Jerusalem, that victorious entry, often called the tri triumphant entry, and the people praise him, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna. Just lift up your voice and tell him, Lord, I thank you. Thank God that again he has brought you into the second quarter of the year 2022. Go ahead and give him thanks. Give him thanks for your own life. Thank God for what he has done for you. We have mentioned a few testimonies here, so go ahead and give God thanks. Just give God thanks. Give God thanks for your own that you didn't mention. Give God thanks. Lord, thank you. Now let's thank God specifically for these testimonies that have been brought to glorify him as the scripture says. They overcame him, the enemy, the devil, by the blood of the lamb and their words of testimonies. Go ahead and give God thanks. Father, we thank you for these testimonies. We thank you for the testifiers. And we thank you for their testimonies. Lord, we thank you for your manifestation in our lives, for your goodness, for your mercy. Lord, we thank you. Lord, thank you for the uh, people you have healed, the testimonies of healing that we have shared. Lord, we, we have shared and we have heard and we are encouraged. Lord God Almighty, we thank you for the testimonies of divine provision. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for the testimonies of sustenance. We thank you for the testimonies of transformation, changing our experiences from negative to positive. We thank you, our God. Lord, we thank you for the testimony of life, keeping all of us alive to see today. We are so grateful. We are so thankful to you, Lord, for all these testimonies that your children have brought to give you thanks, to give you praise. We all say thanks be to you, honor be to you, glory be to you. In the mighty name of Jesus, let's pray for uh, every one of us that our testimonies will continue to enlarge in our lives. The testimonies of God will continue to enlarge, will continue to increase, will continue to enjoy and experience even greater testimonies. Pray, Father, we thank you. And we ask, Lord, that our lives will continue to be testimonies to you, our testimonies, your goodness, your mercy, your praise in our lives will continue to enlarge. Thank you, our Lord and our God, for we have prayed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Sister Comfort, round off this testimony and Thanksgiving session by really uh, 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 and also commit every one of us uh, into God's hand. Go ahead and pray. Our merciful, our kind and loving Father, Jehovah in the heaven above, 
In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we return all thanks and glory to your most holy. Father, you are worshipped out of the heart abundance, the mouth thick. With joyful heart, Father, your children have given testimony of your goodness, of your blessing, of your deliverance and healing to them. Father, we say thank you. May you accept this, your testimony and our thanks. May you continue, oh God, to even double what we have said, what we have said. Amen. You are the God of abundance. Give us the grace. We commit today's event into your hands as we have seen your blessing, as we have seen your glory. May today's event bring you even more glory because we are coming to you in the name of the Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So we're quickly going to take the theme. Our theme for the month is our month of new creation. New creation. Glory be to God. New creation. I will take our text from the book of Galatians. Galatians chapter 6, verse 15. New creation. I will read. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything, but a new creation. I read that again. A text for this month is Galatians chapter 6, verse 15. Our theme, new creation. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but a new creation. This month, the month of April, we know April is spring season. And spring season is a season of rebirth, is a season of renewal, is a season of growth. It is, is growth time. We can also say it's the season of new beginnings. I was checking a report in Britannica, Britannica about spring, and this is what they have to say, just to give us an idea of the season that we are in. It says, during this time of the year, that's the time of spring, all plants, including cultivated ones, begin growth are new after the dormancy of winter. All plants begin growth anew after the dormancy of winter. Animals are greatly affected too. They come out of their winter dormancy or hibernation and begin their nesting and reproduction activities. And birds migrate forward in response to the warmer temperature. So you can see that naturally, we are in the season of refreshing, season of new beginnings, season of renewal, rebirth, growing time is the time of growth. And so in your own life, and in my own life, because we also fall into God's creation, I believe it is time that God Almighty has ordained for us in this year to grow, in this year to experience new beginnings. Whatever was dormant, it is time to experience that dynamic growth in the mighty name of Jesus. This uh, season is also the season of Easter, April. Isn't it awesome that? Easter, which is indeed the true rebirth, rebirth, the real rebirth through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ also occurs at this time. 
So beloved brothers and sisters, I welcome you to your month, to my month, to our month of dynamic group, our time and season of growing, of rebirth, our month of new creation. New creation, of course, you can see is an offshoot from our overall theme for the year, Abundant Life in Christ, Jesus, which we have also spent the first quarter looking at. So this is a continuation. We are going deeper. We are going uh, 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 higher. We are going wider in our experience, uh, in our learning and experience of this life that we have been given through our Lord Jesus Christ. And so we thank God for his infinite wisdom and blessing and for his word. To God be all the glory in the name of Jesus. And so it is our time, our month of new creation. God Almighty bless you and bless me and bless us and bless this word that he has given to us and make this word alive in us. We pray that his word will produce that effect, that transformation in us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I want us to pray quickly with this that we have heard. It is time of rebirth. It is time that that dormancy must go. Because life, new life has come. It's time of new life. What is that thing that requires new life in your life? Raise your voice now with me to heaven and say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for this month of April that you have given to me. This month that you have given to us. We thank you for this season of new creation. This season of rebirth. Reviver, renewer. Lord, we ask that by your spirit, cause us to experience this new creation, the power of your creation, the power of your renewer. Lord, every second, every minute, every hour, every day of the month of April in my own life, I commit to your hand. And I ask, Lord, let me experience unusual dynamic growth. Let every dormancy in my life experience your power, experience your quickening. Let my goals, my desires, according to your will, be met, be achieved, be fulfilled. In this month of April, pour your spirit upon me afresh. In the name of Jesus, pour your spirit upon us afresh, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Now pray with me again and say, Heavenly Father, in this month of April, this season of new birth, this season of new creation, this season of renewal, Father God, let me grow in you. Almighty God, let me grow in you. And let my life please you. Let my life glorify you. Let me grow. Let there be remarkable growth. Growth that I can put my hand and say, yes, I have indeed grown in the Lord. This is a measurable, quantifiable growth. Go ahead and ask him and begin to present those things that you would want to use to really glorify God. Because it's always in our doing. What is that thing that you are trusting God for presented before him now? But more importantly, present your own life, that your life will please God. Your life will glorify God. Your life will honor God. And so what is that dormancy in your life? Tell that dormancy, tell God, present it to God now. And tell him, Lord, this dormancy in my life, let it go. It must go. Let the dormancy go from your life. It's time of prayer. Pray for yourself. Pray for yourself, brothers and sisters. Pray for yourself. Pray for your family. Pray for your own needs. Father, every dormancy in my life, every dormancy in the life of my brothers and sisters, 
dormancy in our careers, dormancy in our businesses. Father, some of us, the things we have planned to do this year, we've not been able to start it. Oh, in this season of rebirth, new birth, let fresh unction, fresh strength. Pour your spirit upon us. Father, let every dormancy cease. Let freshness, freshness, like the spring, oh God Almighty, like the flowers that are blossoming now, let that freshness come upon us. Let that freshness come upon me, come upon my brothers and sisters, and let everything you have ordained for us to do to glorify you, and whatever you are putting in our hearts and, and, and our spirit to do this year, that we may testify of your goodness and continue to serve you. Father, let all blossom, let all walk out in this month of April. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you, our Lord and our God. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. I want us to look at Isaiah 43, 19 again. Isaiah 43, 19, read it with me. Behold, I will do a new thing now. It shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Pray with me and say, Heavenly Father, pour out your spirit afresh upon every aspect of my life. Lord God Almighty, whatever is like a wilderness where we don't know where to go, we don't know how to go about it. There are many startups we're struggling with. Lord, help us. Make way, make road, make road for us, teach us. You've just given us a testimony of how you directed our brother and you have been guiding and directing us. Lord, make way. Even in that situation that looks like a wilderness, make way for us. By your spirit, guide us. In the name of Jesus, Lord, whatever is like a desert, pour your living water. Pour your living water. Let there be fresh life, fresh life, fresh fruit coming forth from us, from our life. Let us be fruitful in all aspects, in all dimensions, in all areas. In the name of Jesus, pray and say, Father, Send me divine help. Send me help, Lord. Both angelic and human and resources, every help I need, Lord, send me help. Send me help. Send help to me, O oh God. Send divine help to me in this month of April. In the name of Jesus. And pray finally and say, Lord God Almighty, I commit my life to you. In this month of April, let my life glorify you. And I pray that every second, every minute, every hour, every day in the month of April shall be a time, a season, a moment of glory unto you, a moment of praise unto you in my life. Thanksgiving will continually overflow in my life throughout this month of April and all through the year 2022. In my life, in my family, in the life of my brothers and sisters, all of us who are gathered here, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And amen. The almighty God bless you, brothers and sisters. And God has heard our prayers. In the name of Jesus. So now we're going to spend time and reconnect. It's time that we call interactive. For the past uh, quarter, the past month, and maybe there are other things, questions, things you want to share, say, feel free to bring it on now. I think we already have a question that somebody sent in. Uh, but before we take that, I will actually have a bit of an order. So those, um, Brother Dara and Sister Joy, will just give us a bit summary of what they have. And after that, any one of us who has um, a reflection, a review 
or something to discuss is interactive now feel free to share about the the the, the past uh, quarter things that we have um, studied learn the time of refreshing or any other question please feel free to bring it on now okay so feel free open the line okay bro uh, dara go ahead so there are a number of things that um, i picked up but usually i like to stay with a uh, one or two that I can continue to hold on. Um, I don't also believe it's coincidence. Pastor, you also shared part of what I wanted to, the parts that hit me, the seven I am that was extended to, I mean, the I am that was extended to, to I think eight, and, eight or nine. Um, nine. All of those, yes, nine of it, all of those, they, for me, they were, uh, they were powerful because sometimes in, in studying as an individual, we tend to not pick some things. And that's also one of the great benefits of this group study. And um, when you highlighted it, I had to go over it again, and they were strong. But then perhaps maybe because uh, I have this scripture that says, it my ever present help in time of need, somehow, perhaps maybe by stage, by virtue of stage, uh, I am as a person, we get to interpret scriptures per time. So a lot of this, that uh, I am the bread of life, it, it comes so strongly for me, perhaps maybe again, it's the season. And in the course of the teaching, uh, so it reminds me, okay, what, what does this mean to me? And uh, I try to take things to the level of uh, my person, my contribution, what do I need to do? What is my role in uh, seeing these things happen in my life in terms of yeah. uh, 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 my work with God? And I see how, you, you also mentioned something while we're teaching. I don't particularly know which part, which part of the, uh, which uh, um, part was it, but you said something about not having a uh, hard off, praying hard off. You just pray anytime. As much as yes, you can pray by when you're led, um, there should also be that structure a particular time that you you know come to god and if you if you remember these are things that you've said before but then they keep striking and so i take it personally now that this has this particular one has also helped me then you the, the thing about love i see when that um, teaching was going on that essentially essentially all of the things that we keep crying and asking god for for the most part of it, it's us who are not making moves. It's us who are not taking action. It's us who are not allowing God to really, you know, work this thing. Because the miracle of the people who, when Jesus turned that water to wine, it the miracle happened when they obeyed and went out and then gave the 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 governor of the feast. That's when the vision changed. That's when they noticed it. Aha. Uh -huh. But then, if we act. We do not go out to you know express love to people or to share this the the, the the good news of salvation or let take this message and relate it to somebody else who would never actually see who limit the experience of God that we had. You know, so that was that's another strong one for me. Um I won't go into the notable miracles because that one also hit me. Then finally, the, 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 the last one here, um, when you were demonstrating that uh, 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 Jesus healed somebody on the Sabbath. That's John chapter five, several parts of it. Uh, Jesus healed somebody on the Sabbath. But this part where the, the Pharisees, they asked the man, who is this person? Who made you well? Who asked you to pick up your mat? You know, who made you well? And then the man replied in verse 11. He said, it, it, it didn't matter to him what the Pharisees were saying. For, for him, he had gotten his miracles. And regardless, whether you're Sabbath or it doesn't matter to him, you know? And then you made a statement that day that uh, um, uh, these Pharisees, they were trying to take him back to what, where he was by virtue of what, that activity and the man would not let it, you know? So it means that even when God do things for us, it is still our own responsibility to stand by it and man that gift every day. Otherwise, we will not see it. You know, these things just jumped out to me, and I'm like, ah, oh, God, thank you so much for, for the session and the grace upon, you know, the, the, uh, yeah, the servant of God in the house to be able to share these things. So these are, there are many more, but these specifically are things that I picked up and I'm holding on to going into the next season as we trust God for. Um, thank um, you. Amen. Thank you for that. Says, Joy, do you have something 
to share. Please go ahead. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So my summary from the whole week is that it is important to check in with our spiritual lives frequently. Um, I feel life gets busy and it's very easy to assume that we're close, we're close to God and we can easily become like passive about relating to God in our daily lives. Um, however, um, if we set time out to spend with God, like what we did in the past week, we become revived spiritually, which ultimately revives us in every other area of our lives as well. So I think it's important that we constantly set time apart to spend in the presence of God in order to be able to walk in the abundant life that he has provided for us as Christians. So that's what um, really stood out to me. And that's what I took away, um, just to be conscious of spending time with God and not just going about life, forgetting about my spiritual life. Thank you so much. Wow, that's so profound. That's so profound. Checking in on our spiritual life regularly so we don't become passive and constantly set time to get revived. Wow, thank you so much. Yes, so any other contribution? This were the designated. Uh, uh, speakers for today, and they have done very well. I, I feel really energized by what they have shared. Okay, let's tackle the question on prayer. So, again, when we talked about the abundant life in Christ Jesus, we looked at we said we we looked at uh, the synoptic gospels. We studied the synoptic gospels uh, deep in depth, and then we said roll it up to um, how many? We rolled it up to six headlines, right? Number one, knowing Jesus Christ, who he is. Number two, looking at the social issues and what Jesus has, you know, taught us to do. Um, number three, our personal life, daily living, which is what Brother Dara just shared, daily living, like also what Joy has emphasized, where daily you set your time and prayer, and then regularly you check in, you do like a clinic, a medical checkup. You see, we do medical checkup for our physical body, but often we forget to do a checkup, spiritual checkup. So time of refreshing that God has given us is a spiritual checkup time. Hallelujah. Yes, so you need to have regular, uh, so your daily living. So why I'm coming to this is to address the question that has been raised because it falls under our daily living, yeah? And then uh, number four, wisdom for living. Principles of life that you should develop on your own based on what Jesus taught to live a meaningful, uh, live a successful life. And uh, number five, we talked about a divine power. And number six, the leadership model of Jesus Christ. Leadership is very important. Many people don't pay attention and developing their leadership capacity and capabilities. You need to, to pay attention. Jesus is the greatest leader of all times. He, he has led from just 12 disciples today, the whole world is still being led by him. That's leadership extraordinary. So we've got to learn that. So now coming to, um, so under daily Christian living comes prayer. And our brother has asked, if you pray and the answer is delayed, what do you do? Right? That's his question. If you pray and the answer is delayed, 
what do you do? Okay, yes, so when we pray to God, um, we really don't set time for God. So first of all, let's get that context right. For example, let me use the one that often hit people. Somebody may say, I must marry at the age of 25. And then the person prays and prays and prays. And 25 comes and passes. And that you can say answer has been delayed, right? That's perhaps the best example I can use. It can also happen in other situations. But let's use this to try and address this. Answer is um, delayed. Two things. First of all, like I said, when we pray, we don't say. So let's look at the book of Mark, chapter 11. Let's remind ourselves of how we really pray. Because many of us also at times think that we are praying, whereas we aren't praying. So let's read from verse 24. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Believe that you receive them and you will have them. That's the principle of prayer. When we ask God, we believe God. So if, if the thing has not come, continue to pray till it comes. Continue to hold on to God. Don't give up. Never you give up. Because God said, if you ask, Anything according to his will, he will do it. And now, also understand that according to his will, because people will tell you, say, oh, maybe it was not God's will. No, no, no. Even to raise the dead, because, you know, the Bible says we are to live here and fulfill our God-given purpose. So it means that nobody should really die at all these uh, young ages. But sometimes accident happens, sickness, disease, and all that. It's not because it's God. So God does who raise the dead, even to raise the dead. What I'm saying that is because it's a tough one. And sometimes we pray and pray and nothing happens. And we say, okay, maybe it's God's will. That's what people always say. No, it's because my faith or your faith is not enough to raise that dead. You haven't become that altar like we were doing yesterday if you join us for that power to flow you have not because it, it is not god god is not limited god can do anything but god is a principled god he follows his principle so that's why i said anything that is delayed in your life continue to pray and no so number one we don't pray and set time for god because god will do his thing. Number two, of course, there are things that you pray and you need time. So you pray, feel free and pray and give put the time that you need the thing. That's part of your own prayer as well. And then number three, God is not limited. So when we pray and things aren't happen, continue to pray. Just keep praying. Number four, as you continue to pray, the Holy Spirit will teach you more to pray also ask the holy spirit because god is not limited so this is what we do when we pray when things that we expect are delayed we continue to pray you pray for the sick the sick is not healed continue to pray and ask the holy spirit help me guide me what do i do and this has happened many times and there are many testimonies that are bound a man called Smith Wigglesworth talks about a situation where a man was completely dried. He's been, they, they, he, they, they, they called him Lazarus. And the Spirit of God spoke to him and they said, he will go and raise up Lazarus. That was the word. And they went and they were praying for this man. They prayed all manner of prayers. Nothing happened. And then he just heard like the Spirit of God whispered to him and just called Jesus. And he, he began, he told them to stop. And he just, they, they stopped praying and said, let us all just call Jesus. And they called Jesus once, twice, three times, four times. The fifth time, the man that has, has been bedridden for so many years, 
got up. There's another testimony of a woman whose husband died and she had believed God that and prayed for the husband because the husband wasn't uh, born again. And God spoke to her that the husband will change and will be serving God. In, but before that happened, the husband died and the woman said, no, this can't be. God is not a liar. My God cannot lie. And so she prayed for the husband for 16 hours before the husband came back to life. So a lot is on us. God is not limited. And that's why in this platform, we have been spending time to develop ourselves, to get to them. Our standard is to grow to the statue of the measure of the fullness of Christ. So we can enjoy all that God has given us to enjoy. So that's uh, my response to that. I hope that does it for you. Don't look at the delay, continue to pray. Yes, brother Sonny, go ahead. Uh, yes, Pastor, uh, though you've already said it all, but I, I wanted to say something before you started. I don't know if I may add one or two things to that. Okay, please add. Yes, what I want to say is that when it comes to the issues of uh, prayer, I think um, prayer is a very serious uh, uh, business and there are some rules that one has to follow when it comes to prayer. And I think the key thing there is uh, praying in the spirit, praying according to the will of God and other things. And for example, I think um, God hears prayer and it's not our effort that will make God to respond to our prayers or maybe like you, like you mentioned, the aspect of telling God by tomorrow, I want this, you must do this to me. I don't think that is right because God works in his own season and time, only for us to follow him. I could remember a day that um, I had a very serious challenge and I prayed. I think um, I wanted to go for a, a service, a church service, or a meeting, a prayer meeting that I used to go. So I did not have anything on me like this. And then I sat there, just sat down, I said, what will I do? So I said, let me leave. let me use this money and do what I want to do, or let me go for the prayer. I left. So when I left, it was in that service, I just sat down, I saw a missed call. I saw a missed call. And I said, wow, okay, let me not bother. When I close the meeting, I will call the person. The, what, the point I'm making there is that they, they, I don't see that, I don't think there is a way that God can delay our prayer if we pray in the right way, if we pray right. That's what I want to see. If we pray right, okay. God will not Good. delay our prayers. Yeah, yes. thank you. God doesn't delay our prayers. I agree with you. And you mentioned again the will of God, which I also talked about. It's important for us to understand the will of God. That's why I was explaining. The will of God is in the Bible. Everything God says in the Bible is the will of God. The will of God is revealed in the Bible. That's why I spend time again letting us know when people say, oh, maybe it's not God's will. The only thing that is not God's will is what is not in the Bible as God's promise to you. And we know that God promises us abundant life, a whole lot of things. Any other thing to share so we can round off now? Hello, Pastor. I just want you to uh, say, say something regarding this. So yes, um, God doesn't, we can't give God time to answer what we pray. Uh, how do you explain situations where someone said, Father, I need this help by tomorrow, and it turns out that it happens? I say, you can ask anything. I mean, if you need something by tomorrow, why wouldn't you ask for what you need? You need it by then, you need it by then. But I'm saying that God doesn't work because of that, your time. That's your prayer, right? And I use the explanation of somebody who says, um, 25th at, at age 25, he or she will marry. Uh, I think it's again coming down to knowing that the prayer is actually our responsibility. It is not God's responsibility. Remember that God is not limited. So you, you have to be able to appreciate all this to be able to uh, understand this subject. God is not limited. Nothing stops God from doing that thing instantly now. That's my point. So it is not because you gave God time or you didn't give God time. So we actually don't pray and tell God, you must do this 
by this time tomorrow. That's what I said. You who prays, you need it by that time. So pray your prayer. You should indeed pray it that way. Why wouldn't you? But I'm saying that God isn't limited. The limitation is with us and on us. So when it looks like it is not happening, continue to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to teach you and guide you so you can get the answers to your prayer. Because like Sonny corroborated, that there are principles, there are ways to pray. And you see, prayer requires both faith and the anointing. Let me make it simple and clear. So, and the principle that God has provided, and we cannot define God and co nor confine God. Us is to continue to seek, but we must take 100% responsibility that God is not limited. God can do whatever he wills to do, and his will is in the Bible. You remember that? So anything that doesn't go contrary to the Bible, you are free to pray, you are free to ask. Brother Dara, I hope this has, again, put it in Con clearer context for everybody. If it is not, please still feel free to make the point. Uh, but I'm hoping that now it, everybody understands. I didn't say don't pray and put your time. I'm saying it is not God you will command with your time. God, you must do this for me by tomorrow. You have, I mean, just like you make your plan, is you who have your need and you put it to God. So put anything before God. But just know that God isn't limited and God is not um, to be commanded by your own time. He will do it. You are the one to learn. We are the ones that are limited, that are to learn, to continue to pray in case we don't see the answers. Okay, Brother Dara, please, let me hear from you. Yes, you have used the key word, the key word that I wanted to get to hear that we don't get to command God on how we should do it, the time and all of those. I wanted to uh, just get that again because people seem to build uh, teachings and principles around these things. And I think from what you said is erroneous. That that's the clarity I want. Thank you, sir. All right. When you add one of the altars of God, you command situations. It's not God you command. You command situations. So study Jesus very well. He, you command situations. But when it comes to God, uh, you ask. <laughs> you plead. <laughs> okay. All right. So prayer has this mix. Yeah? And depending on what level you have developed yourself to, there are different levels and different kinds of prayer. So continue to pray. Don't give up and ask the Holy Spirit to guide and lead you. And then also remember what the scripture provides, which is part of what the Holy Spirit will help you to do. Remember corporate prayer, praying with somebody else, asking. It's not looking around for prayer house. Eh? <laughs> no, no prayer house. Just the fact that like the Bible says, iron sharpened iron, a, a, some, a fake partners I will call, you know, corporate prayer. So somebody who also joins you to believe God for you, not the one they go and pay somebody to fast for them. You just imagine that, paying somebody to fast for you. What? Which God is that one? fasting too. This uh, interactive session is always uh, exciting. So uh, we're going to have more of it. The topic that we are having for the month of April is a discussion topic, new creation. Please take time now and start studying it. And we will start the discussion this, and teaching uh, next Sunday. Let's bring this meeting to a close now every one of us, let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this time, how you have helped us to share together and thank you and praise you. Lord, one more time, we return all glory to you. 
We say that it is because of you that we are alive today. It is because of you that we can lift up our voices to heaven and say thanks be to God. It is because of you, Jesus, the one who shed his blood for us, the one who purchased us with his precious blood, the one who washed us and cleansed us with his blood, that we can say God is our God. Jesus, you are the way, the truth, and the life. You are the only door and access to God. And we thank you for you have opened the door for us to come to the Father. We thank you, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you again for the month of April, the month of growth, the month of new birth, the month of new beginnings, the month of revival, renewal, our month of new creation. Lord, we ask again, Father, that all your blessings that you have ordained for us in this month pour it upon us and let us all have and enjoy your abundant life and let our lives please you, let our lives glorify you in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit of God, even as we have shared on prayer, we ask that you continue to teach us, develop us in our daily living and daily walk on this journey that you have brought us into, this journey of eternal life. And keep us, Father God, by your spirit. Keep us from falling, keep us from failing, but let our lives continue to please you. Heavenly Father, we pray for all nations of the earth at these trying times in the world that, Lord, you will cause your righteousness to reign, you cause your peace to reign. We pray for the leaders all over the world that you put your spirit in them and guide them, Lord, how to resolve the many conflicts that are going on in the world. And we pray for the, uh, your, your people that are suffering because of all the conflicts that are going on in the world, Lord, that you comfort them. Preserve, O oh God Almighty, your children. Provide for the needy. Put your love in the heart of men, Lord, particularly the leaders. Help them, Lord, to resolve their differences and their conflicts. Father, those that are carrying out wars of domination, Lord, may you arise. And let the schemes of men fail. But let your kingdom be established. And let your will be done. And all glory be to you, our God. We pray by your spirit that you draw many souls to yourself through Jesus Christ, the Savior of all humankind, the Son of the living God. Thank you, our Father and our God, for we are prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey,